Table saws are awesome, but if you're new to this world, they can be a little intimidating. Especially if you want to do anything besides long straight cuts. So today I'm going to show you how to build a simple crosscut sled to make your saw more useful. Now I first have to tell you, you don't need a brand new top of the line table saw to build one of these sleds. In fact, the first saw I used was an old jinky craftsman table saw that wiggled around. It wasn't very well put together and it was just old. This thing would shake, the fence on it didn't sit very straight, and it was just a challenge to use. So I ended up building two different sleds for this saw which made it so much more useful and a lot Lot more capable in what this little old saw could do. Now the sled I'm about to show you is for the beginner. It's simple and easy to put together that we can get started much faster. Now if you want to add a bunch of T-track and specialty clamps to your sled, you can. That's totally up to you, but I don't feel the need on your very first one, so we're not going to do that here. First off, we need to figure out how large of a sled we're going to build. We need to look at our table saw. Large table saws like this can handle larger sleds, but if you have a smaller, more compact, kind of contractor type table saw, then I recommend building a smaller version. If you do make them too big, they become real dangerous because they want to fall over the edge and make them real hard to control. Now looking at these old versions, you can see that I use a multiple layer plywood for both of these, and I'm going to continue that process with the new sled. Plywood is good because it's less likely to warp and change shape over time. Looking back at this previous sled gives me a good idea of the size I want for the saw. My new saw is a little bit larger than the old one, so I like this area that it has for me to use. It has about 16 inches on the inside, and total front to back is about 19 inches, not counting this little safety block I added later. So this is a good size I'm going to stick with. If your saw is a little bit on a smaller side, I'd probably make the dimensions a little bit smaller. Now for this setup, I'm going to be using some 3 quarter inch plywood because I already have it on hand, but you don't have to have 3 quarter inch. You could use half inch or possibly even quarter inch to make your sled. Now just remember the thicker your base is, the less saw height you will have overall. Now looking back at this previous sled, you can see that I actually used some eighth inch plywood. And well, it worked, but I was always a little bit nervous that this was going to flex just a little too much and not give me an accurate cut. So you may want to avoid that thin. Now for the width of the sled, I'm going to go 24 inches because I have a large saw, but adjust yours accordingly. And if you happen to have a factory cut edge on your plywood, base everything off of that because that should be almost perfectly flat. Anytime you're cutting across the grain of plywood, I suggest two things. One, have the pretty side facing up and use some painter's tape right where the blade will be cutting. And both of those will kind of minimize any tear out. With the base cut out, I want to work on the front and back supports. Now as you can tell, these are really thick and that's because these give strength to your sled. And I have just enough leftover material that I should be able to cut four pieces out at about four inches. With our four pieces cut out, we now need to glue them into two sets. When doing this, we need to make sure they are flush on the long sides. That way they don't rock back and forth when we're trying to install them. And of course, make sure we clamp them along the full width so we have a nice strong fence. And while that glue is drying, we next want to work on these two pieces of wood here that will go in the slots on your table saw. On my two previous sleds, I actually used pine for those slots, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you're going to use it a lot. That's because pine can deform pretty easily. Instead, I'd get some kind of a hardwood, and that way it can handle a lot more abuse. When making our little sliders, I just used a table saw to get those nice long cuts, but I measured a bunch of times because we cannot have any side to side movement. Each of these little sliders have to be super tight within the grooves. They need to be able to have just enough room to go forward and backwards, but not side to side at all. We also want these sliders to be just shallow of the surface of your table saw when they're in the grooves. That way when we attach them to the sled, they don't drag on the bottom of your groove. And it's now time to attach our sliders to the bottom of our sled. And to do that, we need to make sure our little sliders sit slightly proud of each of the grooves. And to do that, I'm going to add a little nut at the front and to the back, and that should allow it to sit right in place. To attach our sled to our actual sliders, I'm just going to use some CA glue. Now we all know that CA glue dries really quickly, so we don't have much time to get everything into position. So here's a little tip. We're actually going to use the fence as a helping tool. Now I found the center of my sled and I'm lining it with the center of the blade and that way I know half and half is on each side of the blade. I'm then going to lock the fence into place and that's going to do two things. First off, it's going to allow me to pivot this when I want to set them on the sliders and glue them in place, but also because your fence is locked in position, it's now locked square with the blade and you don't have to worry about this being out of position as well. Now when you're ready, put some CA glue in a few key spots and then position it in place. And then just put a little weight on it so you know it'll dry flat. 
And after giving it some time to cure, you should be able to lift it straight off. And now you have the rails attached. Looking back at the pieces we glued up earlier, I have a little glue squeeze out and I'm just gonna use a chisel to smooth that out. Earlier when I tried to glue these up, I tried to keep it as smooth as possible, but there is a little bit of lip here. So I'm gonna take this back over to the table saw and we're gonna knock off maybe a 32nd of an inch. And that way this will be nice and smooth all the way across. Now that we have the front and back pieces nice and straight and smooth, if by chance you were gonna try and make this a little more fancy and add a rail, this would be the time to do it. But I'm gonna keep this nice and simple and attach it as is. We're first gonna attach the far side of the sled. Now looking back at this previously built sled, the far side is mainly just to give strength to the entire sled. It doesn't have to be overly critical and perfectly 90 degrees to the blade. So therefore, I'm just gonna add some glue, align it to the edge of the sled here, and then clamp it and screw it in place. Now flip the sled up onto its side and to be able to continue to work with this while the glue is drying, I'm just gonna add a few screws in some key locations just to make sure it doesn't move around. I'm also gonna add a screw at the end of each of these slides just in case the CA glue ever comes off. I'm also gonna pre-drill and countersink each of these holes so that way I don't split any wood and so that the screws don't ever come in contact with the table. Then I'm gonna take the sled and we're gonna put it right back in those slots followed by raising the blade up to be just taller than the base of the sled. I'm then gonna start the blade and cut a notch to the center of this board, leaving about two inches on the back. Now let me explain why this cut is critical to your sled. If we were to take the fence and just line it up along the edge that we cut earlier, I can almost guarantee you that it will not be 90 degrees to this cut. So let me measure it and show you. Now here's a large speed square to show you what I mean. I'm going to align it along this edge and push it right up to that cut. Might be a little bit hard to see, but it is touching the cut right there. And up here, it is at least one, if not two millimeters off. So therefore, this cut is nowhere close to 90 degrees. Now to attach this side relatively easily, I'm actually going to line it up along the edge. I'm going to clamp it down. Then I'm gonna add one screw just on one side. And that'll allow me to pivot it back and forth to get it aligned with that 90 degree mark. Now I can take these clamps off and this pivots real easy. So now we just need to make sure we can get a 90 degree angle. Just make sure whatever you're using to measure square is square itself. Using a corner square, I'm going to line it up on one side, adjust it accordingly to make sure it is 90 degrees, and then I'm just gonna rotate the square and make sure it lines up again on the other side. And that looks almost perfect. Once you get it lined up, get some clamps, and we wanna clamp it down in a few locations, but then re-measure it, because there's a very good chance when you're clamping it, it might move just a little bit. Very gently put it back on its side and add three more screws. Now I'm not gonna add glue to this side, just in case I ever have to adjust it, I can. And two of those screws are gonna go through these slides for extra support, just like I did on the other side. Now the sled is nearly complete, so I put it back on the table saw, and we're gonna slide it back and forth just to make sure that it moves freely. Now if by chance it gets a little sticky at points moving it back and forth, that means we had a little bit of movement in our sliders. But as long as you can still move it the full width of the table saw, then I just like to move it back and forth a bunch of times and that'll kind of wear away those high surfaces. Otherwise you might need to take some sandpaper on your sliders to loosen them up. Next, let's raise your blade to its highest setting. Then we're gonna turn the blade on and we're gonna carefully run it through both fences all the way through to make a full cut. But be very careful on the back side because as that blade comes through, we don't want our hands to be anywhere near that center. Make sure to have them to the outside. Now your table saw crosscut sled is ready to use, but let me suggest two more things to make it even better. Now on each of your slides and the entire bottom surface of your sled, I'd strongly suggest using some type of a paste wax. This just happens to be a brand that I can find locally, but any kind of paste wax should work. You just wanna coat the entire bottom and then wipe it off fully the best you can. This should allow it to glide a lot easier across your table saw. The paste wax is also a great protectant for the top of your table saw. And the second suggestion would be adding a little extra protection on the back of your sled to keep your hands away from this spinning blade. For example, on this old sled, I just added a couple more layers of plywood right here on the back side where the blade will come out. That way when I go to grab it, my thumb is not gonna accidentally slide in front of that area. Now you can make cross cuts on your table saw much safer and much easier. 
I hope you enjoyed this simple project, and if you did, you may want to check out this video.